So I want to talk about a specific energy concept here, and that being ATP. And so I'm using my trusty little whiteboard uh, to deliver a video to you. So I'm going to use some of the, the language and the terms and the chapter five on energy and going over this. So hopefully some of it will sound familiar if you uh, listen to my PowerPoint narration and been hopefully going over the study guide to answer things based on that. So ATP, uh, limited space here. So, you know, write some things down if you need to. I only had so much space. So again, that stands for adenosine triphosphate. So ATP is just the abbreviation. And so this is an R. So that's a ribose sugar. And this is an adenine. That's the nitrogenous base adenine. So together those things are called, when they're bonded together, they're called adenosine. That's the A. And then there's one, two, three phosphate groups that are bonded to that sugar. And so that's the triphosphate. So in adenosine triphosphate, this is the energy molecule that cells on earth uh, use. Uh, for endergonic reactions, for reactions that require an input of energy to occur. ATP is the molecule that's used to do that. And where's the energy coming from in this molecule? Where is it located? The answer to that is here in these covalent bonds between the phosphate groups. So there's a covalent bond there and there's one there. And so remember what a covalent bond is. It's uh, two electrons that are being shared between the atoms. So there's two electrons being shared there and two there. So those covalent bonds are full of energy. Those electrons are full of energy. And that's what cells are tapping into when they use ATP for energy, is the energy from those electrons. I drew those as not straight lines, but as kind of wavy lines, and uh, that's done sometimes in chemistry to show uh, bonds that are weak, that are unstable, and ready to break. So those covalent bonds between those phosphate groups are very unstable, they're ready to break, and that's a good thing for cells, because that means that those bonds will break very easily and give up that energy very easily. That's why ATP is used by all cells on Earth. What makes them unstable? Each of these phosphate groups has what kind of charge? They're each negative. And remember that things that have similar charges do not attract, but they repel. So when you have three phosphate groups that have all been stuck together, kind of unwillingly, uh, with all those negative charges, that are wanting to push away from each other and that makes that bond unstable, which is a good thing. So it'll give up the energy for endergonic reactions. So down here I'm showing you uh, how ATP works. So here's an adenosine triphosphate, one, two, three phosphates, and here's, a, uh, here's two substrates, here's two chemical reactants, glutamic acid and ammonia. This example is illustrated in uh, your uh, chapter. And so uh, what's happening here is, you know, the glutamic acid and the ammonia need uh, energy in order to bond together. And so ATP comes to the rescue, doo -doo -doo -doo, and supplies that energy for them to bond together and to make the amino acid called glutamine. So that phosphate group is uh, very unstably attached. It breaks off and when it attaches to that glutamic acid, what's happened is a process called phosphorylation. Phosphorylation involves the bonding of a phosphate group to a molecule. So that glutamic acid has been phosphorylated. And when it's phosphorylated, the energy from that covalent bond is transferred to the glutamic acid and now it's given enough energy that it's able to make this uh, chemical reaction happen. And boom, we've got glutamine. That's how we make it in our cells. 
Now when that phosphate group comes off, then now we don't have ATP, there's no longer three phosphates, but now this molecule is a DP, adenosine diphosphate. There's still more energy here in this covalent bond. There's not as much as in the first one, but uh, that one can break off too and also uh, supply some energy for an endergonic reaction. So the hydrolysis of ATP, when ATP splits apart like that, it releases energy. So that's exergonic. And that energy that's released and given to this reaction, which is endergonic, that process, I didn't write this on the board here, but I mentioned it in the PowerPoint, that's called energy coupling, where the energy from one reaction, that's exergonic, is used to make another uh, reaction happen that's endergonic. So those reactions are coupled. Energy coupling, that's what it's called. So hopefully this helped you. Just a quick crash course summary in ATP. Um, I also mentioned in the PowerPoint, ATP helps with chemical work, building molecules like